Hello, welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 227, and it is November 2nd, 2014. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. And I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Um, apologies in advance for any background noise. Uh, Michael's buddy is here in town, and they are consuming alcohol and cooking ribs, <laughs> so there might be noise. That's a good combination, actually. Yeah. Michael and I were texting earlier because the Dolphins game was actually on in Mississippi, which I'm not certain how that happened. And of course it was like 30 to nothing at halftime or something crazy. So they switched the game. Yeah, that's, that's what he said. <laughs> so... They actually won it as a shutout. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. I didn't look at the final score because I was like, they're going to win. There was no contest on that. Um, so this is a knitting podcast. It is. Would you like to go first, or would you like me to go first? Why don't you go first? Maybe I can get to the end of this row. Okay. I have actually two things on the needles, but just one that I'm going to show you. Leslie's um, slippers are also on the needles. I'm almost done with the second one, but they are out there, and I kind of forgot them. They're out of Lamb's Pride Doubled, um, and they'll be felted, and she can show you them when they get to her, which will be in less than a week. So I am knitting on a pair of socks, or a sock, out of Dreaming Color Everlasting in the Wilderness colorway. Their label looks like this. Everlasting is a gorgeous non-play sock yarn that is 100% Australian merino wool. Um, they've recently redone this yarn so that it has more twist. Um, so there is a difference between older skeins that you might find at a local yarn shop and um, newer batches. And in fact, the... Um, the Dream and Color Club that they do that some people carry. This month is, um, in November, it's their DK base that Leslie knit out of before. Mm -hmm. And this is the Wilderness, or Colorway 705. And I am about to start the toes. So this is my first sock. And I started with a 1x1 one one rib and went to a 3x1 rib and very loud needles. And then did the battle begone heel from sock architecture which is a new to me heel and then just have been knitting down the foot and um have been too lazy to try it on so we are going to uh it'll fit somebody yeah it'll fit somebody it'll probably fit me i kind of st stuck it beside i'm wearing my slippers today and they are nice and hand knit socks because it's kind of chilly here and they are nice and cozy and i don't feel like taking them off to measure things <laughs> or try on socks um, the needles I'm using are the Knitter's Pride Nova Platinas, um, which I am enjoying, but they do have a very small, like, three-inch tip. So if that's not what you like, these would not be the needles for you, at least in the 16-inch size. Um, I'm doing two circular method, and these are size 1, 2.25 millimeters. They are nice and light, and they do have a nice join. Um, and I got these from Webs. Um, I think I have the... Yeah, I do. And the packaging looks like that. Pretty. So, um, they are here to dazzle, to enchant, and to mesmerize with their exquisite quality and chrome-plated glitzy smooth with 18 O's surface. Tips that are slender, pointier, and sharper, and joins that let stitches move on in an express mode. There's lots of exclamation marks and commas. Um, so... <laughs> That is what I am using. They are shinier, longer, and pointier tips. Man, if these were longer tips, I don't know what the other <laughs> tips were like. <laughs> um, so I have a feeling that they are kind of um, Nova's answer to sock rockets, but I do like my sock rockets a little bit more. There's definitely a price difference there. The sock rockets are more expensive, but not by more than $10 a pair. So um, more like maybe 5 so that is what I am working on. What are you working on, my dear? Uh, well, I've got two things that I'm actively working on. The colorwork hat I was working on last week I haven't touched, um, which is becoming a habit for me. I'm not working on the same things from week to week. And I just dropped a stitch marker. Oh, hmm. there we go. Um, so the first are the Simple Skype socks in, or Simple Skip. I don't know how you pronounce that. 
in the Concrete and Tulips colorway of Caterpillar Green. These are for Mama Lemon for Christmas. Caterpillar Green does shawl, um, yeah. shawl size skeins as well now in a self-striping, which is really interesting to me. So I started the cuff, or the heel flap rather, um, while I was doing some mandatory online regulatory thing I have to do every year. Um, which basically is to watch a slideshow for an hour and then answer some questions. So I was That's knitting fine. during that and I got a little bit done, which is nice. It's, this is, this stays in my purse, um, for work cause it's yeah. small and portable. And that's in one of my Bling Your String Club bags from the last round. My oh, okay, this year I was like, my Bling the String bag came. I'll have to show it to you, and it's in here. That's good. And that is on a uh, 2.25 millimeter needle. And I magic loop as often as possible. Oh, the shawl is pulling out my earbuds. Okay, so that's one thing that I'm working <laughs> on. And the other Please. thing is uh, Laura, a test knit for Laura for her new shawl that will be coming out um, in November. Yeah. And I am not at a great point to show you, but <laughs> I'm knitting it out of Shalimar Breathless DK in the sea glass colorway, cool. which I was guilted into purchasing by Jessica. And Jessica's Lynn. good at guilting this week. She is. Um, I mean, it is very nice yarn to work with. Um, so, That's what I designed that hat out of, and I just love it. You might have enough left over for a hat. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. It could match. So, and I'm knitting this on U.S. size 6, even though the pattern calls for 5, because I'm a tight knitter, so I almost always go up a size. And I am getting close to the end of the garter part, which is nice. Cool. I just started it. <laughs> Leslie uh, doesn't like garter. You're like the one person. I, I don't mind it. Enjoy I just I don't enjoy it when I'm trying to get something done. Like it's great mm -hmm. for mindless, just filling time knitting. But I want to make sure that I have this adequately test knit for the release. So yeah, I'm just you know because it's timeline. It's got a timeline on it. I just feel like I'm not making as much progress as I would like to. Uh, but that's it. That's all that I'm working on. I'm almost done with my first skein. I just had a little bit left. It fell cool. down. And that's pretty much it. I didn't finish anything as far as um, knitting-wise this week. I finished three things knitting-wise, um, all in the last 48 hours. <laughs> You're on a roll. <laughs> just ridiculous. Yeah. We'll see if I can finish anything else tonight um, since the Steelers are playing the late game. So I finished, the first thing that I finished is the shawl. So this is the Wiz Popper shawl. Which is the one I'm test knitting. Yep, and it is um, blocked, and I wore it yesterday. That's and there's pretty. the border. Um, it sits very nicely on my shoulder, so I really like that. And I would say it actually uses around 650 yards of a DK weight. I need, to, or I use that much. I need to weigh what I have left over and truly figure it out. Um, so that is going to happen. And I'm that's out of Infinite it. Twist. It is. It is out of Infinite Twist Helix in the Peacock colorway. And I had a tag, but my desk is kind of a mess right now. I um, grabbed all my needles that were loose earlier, and I put them back in their little containers. Um and so I kind of scooted everything off so I had, like, a clear surface to do that. And I also, um, all my hand spun from, whatchamacallit, is over Spindle. on, Spinzillo is sitting over on the other side. So I'll find it. Um, but yeah, Infinite Twist Helix in the Peacock colorway. And this pattern, and Leslie's pattern, will be available through Infinite Twist in kit formation. Yep, lighter this Pretty time. soon, yeah. Um, I also finished... A wee little pumpkin. And I was waiting for trick-or-treaters that never showed. So couple, I knit this. Right? I had like two. And I bought candy for like 200. Uh. Yeah. Um, but this was my first year in the house during Halloween. So, and actually I was going to buy more candy than that. And my um, coworker, who's actually my neighbor across the street, told me, mm, maybe not. 
And I was like, okay. And then it was super cold here on Halloween. It yeah. was in um, the 40s, and so there were very few people out. And the ones the ones that I did get were like car drive bys. Mm -hmm. Like it was two little kids, and they hopped in and out of a car every five minutes um, to trick or treat. So anyway, while I was waiting for people, I knit a little pumpkin, and this is the Jack B. Little Pumpkin out of some LRA worsted scraps that I had, and then the top little brown is some hand-spun scraps. Um, it is not my favorite pattern ever, but it's super cute for what it is. You basically knit a tube, and then you gather all the stitches. Like, there's no decreasing. You just gather all the stitches and cinch it together. Oh, okay. And then you um, pick up all the stitches at the bottom and cinch it together, like, with oh. a needle. Yeah, yeah. so, it, like, my bottom is kind of messy but whatever um so if i was to do it again i'd do a provisional cast on and i would decrease a little bit on yeah. both sides and then you pick up um she has you pick up like three or four stitches and do the i cord i picked up each one of those um knits it's actually inside out too and you flip it so there's very little purling so i picked up each of the um what were pearls before they um right. became knits and um after I cinched it and then decreased and then knit an eye cord. So it's good for what it is. It's squishy. I can throw it at the cat. It will probably become a cat toy actually. Um, Cause he's been crazy lately. Like, I don't know if it's the cold and he's just like super excited. It's cold. Or if his tail is now a separate entity from him <laughs> in his mind, but he has been chasing his tail all over the house. I'm just acting crazy. Like, so, um, and then the third thing that I finished, the last thing that I finished is I finished a garter stitch ear flap hat, which is one of my favorite patterns. It's a free pattern. The pumpkin pattern was also free and I knit it on size fours. Um, this is a free pattern and it's knit on size sevens and size eights. This was all knit on size sevens because I forgot <laughs> that I was supposed to, like you cast on with eights and then you go up to sevens, yeah. um, to make the stockinette brim a little bit tighter. I totally cast on with sevens because I cannot read. Um, and this was hand spun that I spun in last year's Spinzilla. I love how shiny it is. It was um, the grape Kool-Aid colorway of a bat from Nidian Color. And I actually remember I um, last year Pline didn't count, so I spun a bunch of singles. So I just spun this all on one bobbin and then made a center pole ball. And it, and into it a was disaster, like, right? yeah, it was crazy because it was four ounces, and it is way too small for me because it's the kids' version. But I like it. it. Looks like that. I like the tassel. It's very um, Whovillish, Doctor Susian. So it is pretty awesome. And Alice was super sick this week, and so um, I've Facetimed with them a lot. Actually, it's so funny. Like our thing now is to Facetime in the car. Um, like they are riding in the back seat and they always get me when I'm either riding or driving. <laughs> and so when I'm driving, I'm like, okay, I'll see. I'm, I pull into a parking lot and we go from there. Um, but, uh, I was like, Alice, I'm knitting. I was trying to cheer up. I'm knitting you a purple hat. And she was like, no pink. <laughs> I was like, um, too late, okay. Too late now. <laughs> well, I'll knit this one and then I'll knit you a pink hat. So, um. Hopefully she'll get over that and she will like this. I bet you she will. I'm sure. So she this will. is going in a belated Halloween package with the um, sparkly hand spun scarf that I knit for Julia. So they'll get that and their um, My Little Ponies. We do the secret My Little Ponies. They come in these packs and you don't know which ones which and then you open them. It's fun times. Mm -hmm. And then maybe some candy because they both like Skittles. Which is not the kind of candy that's at my house. A child that likes sugar? <laughs> that is so crazy. <laughs> I love it. Um, the extra Halloween candy is not going to work either because my kids were off the hook on Friday. That's what like, I heard. Crazy sugar high. So they are getting no more sugar. I'm so glad that Halloween was on a Friday night so that like I did not have to go with the sugar hangover repercussions the following day. I did not have to deal with that at all. So that is the three things that I finished. You finished some spinning, though, correct? I did. I got quite a bit of spinning done this week. Um, so last week I had finished the four ounces of that purple hobbledehoy bat. 
Yeah. And I was considering... Was it Hobbledehoy or Enchanted, or Enchanted Knoll? Knoll? I'm sorry. Yes, Enchanted Knoll. And I was considering applying it together with four ounces of uh, black and rainbow colored bat. And I wasn't sure. And then I just decided to do it. Because yes. Laura's the boss of me. Yes, I'm the boss of everyone. So I got a giant skein. I love it. It's huge. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, I'm still not totally convinced, but there's some pretty spots in it. It has not had its bath yet. Um, it's pretty well balanced, but it does still need its bath. But I knew it wouldn't be dry if I did that yeah. today. So it is... I love it. It's a very subtle rainbow with the purple. Yeah. I mean, I think it came out nicely. It's um, probably about a DK now. I expect it'll plump up to at least a worsted when I wash it. Um, because a lot of it is wool-based, that lambican base. So it came out pretty nice. How did you like the lambican? Did you enjoy spinning? It was very soft. It was very nice to use. It was good to draft? Yes. Mm -hmm. It drafted really well. But not so slippery. Like some merinos can be really, really slippery. And lambican mm -hmm. wasn't wasn't really that. Interesting. Bad. So I got 750 yards wow. um, out of 8 ounces total. So it's not awesome. stellar or anything, but it's pretty good. No, that's a great DK weight. That's enough to do something like knit another shawl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I did that. And then I had some bobbins that were full from yarn school that I hadn't touched because right after yarn school was Spinzilla and I didn't have time to mess with those because I yeah. wasn't going to get credit for it anyway. So yeah. Um, I need to wash that. So I got two skeins that were on my bobbins from Spinzilla. This one is one that I dyed at yarn school. That came out really pretty. Um, what it, base was that on? I don't know. I think it was the 100% wool, like the just... American wool. Yeah. yeah. The one that's not a super wash. And I had to write it down. I got two ply, 476 yards of probably a bulky in this um just no, it was eight ounces yeah, yeah of eight ounces out of this just green it has green and some blues in it was that your crock pot dye um yes and it was intended to be a gradient but everything bleed bled together yeah everything kind of bleeds down in those plus i forgot the citric thing in one of the layers <laughs> so that <laughs> didn't did help that too. yeah <laughs> um so, citric acid yeah so this yeah. is a little bit scratchy. I probably wouldn't advise it for next to skin wear, but it'll be fine for hats and uh, you stuff can like make that. more of the slippers out of it. Yeah, I could make slippers out of it. That's true. So, and this one I wasn't very scientific in the way that I split it. So, um, it's just sort of a shifting green and blue mixture, which okay. I'm fine with. I and like it. The last one was wow. some. Uh, fiber that Stacy of Tempted, she dyed eight ounces and gave me half, and she spun half, and I'm sure she uh -huh. got way better yardage than me because I wasn't. Oh, that was the really pretty one. Yeah, it's it's her lioness color, but it's without the olive green. So she named it something else. She has some in, for sale in her shop, I think. Yeah, I don't remember what it's called. I'll have to look it up. But it's a fifty fifty merino silk blend, so it's very shiny, and mm. it was fun to spin. Actually, I don't mind silk. Um, for spinning but there were some spots that um the silk was is a little clumpy like right there yeah um but it's very very soft and i got 328 yards out of four ounces and it's probably a dk it's gorgeous but it's very pretty i like it and it'll be easy to mix it with another color because it's got so many shades of purple, red. Yeah, it'd be and fun to stripe with. Orange and yellow. Like, do some of those Susan B. Anderson mittens where they're striped. <gasps> Speaking of which, Susan B. Anderson has a new pattern coming out that I'm so excited about. The Infinite Twist one that just uh, came out? Because that's gorgeous. No, that or the beautiful. new Yowza. I did text her and tell her that that was beautiful. But the Yowza one is the one I'm thinking of just because yeah. it's like you just take what you have and use it. So it's kind of sort of like so the, when you have random skeins of yowza yeah. sitting down by or your hand feet spun. i think it'll be yeah. great for hand spun as well oh yeah so i'm really excited about that one that's coming out um i ex she she releases them pretty quickly so it'll probably be out within the next week or so she's pretty awesome that susan yeah. b anderson it's like she's a professional or something <laughs> uh so she's yeah. cute as a button too she is you just want to put her in your little pocket she's a wonderful teacher as well uh, anyway, so that's all of my spinning. I have not spun anything else 
uh, yet, but I might work on some South Down that I'd started a while back. Yeah, cool. How are you going to spin the South Down? Long draw, most definitely. I love long draw from the folds. It is the best. So we'll see. I, I need to... Um, I've got a few bobbins. Remember how when I during Spinzilla I was like, yeah, I know how many bobbins I have now. I, I didn't. I, I found four more. <laughs> I found some bobbins too. Like so, I cleaned off my dresser today because um, my dresser holds spinning and knitting supplies as everyone's dresser should. Well, yeah. What else um, would you use it for? On the top. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, because my lunch room sits beside it, so stuff gets that in the cedar chest. Stuff gets kind of put on top there, and um. I found, like, three more Lundrum bobbins that had, like, leftover bits on them. And I was like, oh, so I have, like, 20 Lundrum bobbins. That's good to know. So the sweater spin I'm doing right now, um, I will use um, some of those for. I should be able to spin it all onto, um, their, like, before I start plying, I can spin them all. So then I can decide if I want to do um, what you did with when you combined. Mm -hmm. The plies um, of the different colors yeah so leslie like let's say she spun um colors two... a b and c yeah so i plied uh, together one ply of color a with one ply of color b to help better blend them yeah and like b was c and mm -hmm. she did it that way so um that was super cool um and so i have to decide if i want to do that or kind of keep them permanent because i'm going to knit the lesses more sweater out of this hopefully i'm now thinking that my weight might be a little bit thicker than DK. It might be more of a worsted. So I'll have to look and see. You can always do all your yardage, you know, count all your yardage up and then just do a custom fit. Yeah, I need to um, join custom fit. I've not done that yet. So I need to get on that. I've been, I haven't, it's one of those things like the second I want to use it, I'll join. But since I haven't wanted to use it and it's free to join and then it's what, $9 a pattern? Uh, yeah, I think it varies. Um, no, I think you're right. I think it's like nine ninety nine a pattern. But yeah, the patterns are all awesome. customized to your exact measurements, and they yeah. tell you, you don't have to try to figure out which number applies to you. It's only mm -hmm. your numbers. So, Yep, that's pretty awesome. So we have a question from Zen Knits 130 It's um, two parts. Oh, and you linked what I was going to link. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> You're my favorite. Um, so Leslie and I don't look at the question. We don't discuss the questions before we read them on the air. And her question is, do you know of any shawl patterns that would be good for variegated yarn? And we do. <laughs> we know a lot. Um, Lala Simple Shawl, which is designed by me, is definitely good for variegated yarn. And that one's a free pattern. That is. Um, I have knit, let's see, something blue, which belongs to Leslie. Um, that was the... Line Break by Vera Velamaki. Mm -hmm. That was awesome out of, um, I knit it out of a, like a solid, a semi-solid from Skein, but it could easily be done in um, a variegated. Basically, the rule of thumb with variegated yarns is the more highly contrasty the yarn, the simpler the pattern. Right. So you want something that's primarily stockinette or garter stitch with some kind of um, maybe lace at the bottom or um, very big motifs of lace that could be easily seen. If even you're going to include lace. Yeah. If you're, yeah. If it's a lace pattern, if it's just, you could just do a garter stitch, something like Hitchhiker. Mm -hmm, which um, is by Martina Bam. Yeah. Um, which is all, I did a seashells. Um, knit Simply Seashells by Susan Ashcroft. I knit that out of var Variegated, and that yeah. looked nice. A lot of Susan Ashcroft's yarns or patterns, I think, patterns, would work Patterns, definitely. For, um, the Quaker Yarn Stretcher, I think, is a really good one for Variegated. Yeah. Brickless, um, which is Martina also Martina Bems are the um, similar. And then Susan B. Anderson has numerous shawl patterns. Um, I did that. I'm trying to find it now. That's actually why I pulled up this. I'm going to pull up her thing. Um, I've knit a couple. You did one. The Prairie of her Ridge. Patterns. Yes, mm -hmm. that would be perfect. Um, what What other, while I look this up, what other things are you thinking? Well, I'm looking to see, but most of my shawls are put away. So, um, like, I, like you said, I think the key is that you make sure that it's, the, the pattern itself is visually simpler than a really detailed like pie shawl or 
intricate lace shawl if you're going to use variegated because it's just going to get lost it's you're going to be disappointed in not being able to get the wow factor that you would with mm -hmm. a solid yarn if you're going to do something very delicate and lacy and you know you your time is valuable you want to have that you know wow end result um, and i think that for variegated yarns like laura mentioned it's you're going to be better off sticking with a simpler pattern like something in garter stitch or something mostly in stock and or garter so the 50 row shawlette by susan mm -hmm. b anderson was what i was thinking of um knitting pipeline paula also has the magic ball ruffle shawl which would be perfect that would be a great um that would be a great use i knit another one of susan's that i absolutely love that i gave to my grandmother that um she wears all the time um the quaker ridge shawlette that's another great one because that's just textured and that's got to be to bind off. Um, my hope is also designed and variegated. So like we've been talking about, the simpler the pattern, the better it's going to show in a variegated um, And I think yarn that also you can use Ravelry to your benefit here because let's just take it as an example, um, Miss Babs Yowza is, mm -hmm. is usually variegated. Most of the skeins that she does are variegated. So yeah. you can go to the yarn page and then you can go to pattern record. There's a tab at the top. There's several tabs at the top uh -huh. to tell you how many people have it in their stash, um, how many projects have been knit out of it, etc. And there's a tab for pattern ideas or pattern suggestions. And mm -hmm. it'll give you a, a ton of suggestions using that yarn uh, and you can even further dive into it there with the advanced search to say, okay, well, just show me shawls that are knit out of this yarn. Yes, definitely. So it'll give you an idea of, and so you can look at them and say, oh, well, it didn't work so well in this because there was too much lace or whatever. Yeah. It'll give you, you know, use Ravelry to your benefit and go out there and do some searching, especially with the advanced Ravelry pattern search is, is a great feature. Yes. Uh, that I recommend using. And you can actually, if you have a colorway in a certain yarn, you can see what other mm -hmm. people have done by sorting by that colorway. Yep, that's true. Which is pretty cool as well. So you can see what it um, looks like knit up. So her second question is, I want to learn to spin, but I want to practice with a spinning wheel first. Do you know of a way to build a spinning wheel? And we do. Yeah. <laughs> as weird as that is. Um, when we went uh, to Camp Kip a couple of years ago. couple. <laughs> Like five. Okay. A, a long time ago. <laughs> we met a lovely gentleman. Uh, and his name on Ravelry is Bishop of Net. Yes. I can't remember his real name. I think it's Scott. I'm totally gonna look it up now. Anyway, and he was telling us about his dodecahedron wheel, his dodec wheel. Yeah. And um And we'll link it in so, the show notes. Yeah, um so he um he actually created this wheel and it got published in spinoff mm -hmm. and the blueprints are available for free online. online. Yeah. Um, so and very he cool. estimated that it cost him like $7 to make this wheel. And yeah. that included the parts uh, like buying the wood. Um, this wheel is uh, spindle. I don't know how it's a quill quill. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it doesn't have a bobbin. It's got a quill. Um, but if it's a free wheel, which would be similar, be yeah, mean, it's similar to, um, it's like spinning off the like point. a spindle. Yeah. yeah. Um, spinning on a point of a spindle. It, you, I got you, to spin on it at an ending pipeline cause he brought it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, you do need some tools or have access to someone with some tools for cutting the wood in specific ways and um, putting the pieces together. But it does look like something that could be done in a weekend if you have a handy husband or brother or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's out there for free. I mean, it costs nothing to download this thing and take a look and maybe send it to your husband as a Christmas gift <laughs> idea or whatever. Um, Another idea is um, some spinning shops um, or knitting shops have wheels and they rent them. Mm -hmm. Um, two in the Memphis area did that for a while. Hank of Yarns now out of business and she did that, but Rainbow does that. Um, and that's how Leslie and I actually chose our first wheels mm -hmm. was by renting wheels from her. Um, like a Louette, old school Louette was like an S10 was not for me. I think that was the first thing we rented. Yeah. And it was, not and I went from either. the ladybug, um, from there. 
I do want to try the Louette Julia because that's Scotch tension and that sounds interesting. But um, you could try to rent a wheel from a local um, knit shop, also guilds. Yeah, sometimes if guilds. you join a guild, sometimes they have wheels for rent. Um, I know the Memphis Guild did. They had an old Ashford traditional. Um, and say... maybe putting a call out on Ravelry for if you have a local group where mm -hmm. someone might allow you to come to their house for a couple hours and try out a wheel. And you too. can always check sites like Free Cycle or Craigslist. You never know what you find. Yeah. Um, but I would say one of the most important things to keep in mind, I understand wanting to try things before you buy them. A hundred percent. I get that. But I would also recommend trying to sit with someone who does spin and because some when you start something as new and like all the new muscle memory that you have to develop for spinning it can be frustrating if you're missing one little thing uh -huh. and you can't get the yarn to go on the bobbin or whatever um, yeah it can be really frustrating so i would I mean, one of the really important things I would say is just find somebody and sit that already knows how to spin and just sit with them. Mm -hmm. and, and just watch them for a little bit. Yeah, and see if they can help you or let you borrow their wheel, even if it's just for a few hours or a day or whatever. Yeah. Um, it, the a lot of the, of the yarn things... shops will not let you rent a wheel unless you've taken a class. That's true, yeah. But, I mean, one of the great things about Fibercraft is that it's a very communal craft. Yeah. So take advantage of that and, and find someone to sit down with if you can. If you're anywhere near any kind of metropolitan city, there's probably a guild. And you can go, usually you can attend a couple of meetings for nothing and just sit down and talk to people and try out different wheels and things like that. And I know in the Shocked group on Ravelry, there's been people who have been like, I live in this area. Is there anyone within an hour radius who could, who has a Shocked wheel that could yeah, let allow me, try me to, it. yeah, mm -hmm. meet, could we meet up somewhere and let me try it. So that's another option as well. So I hope we've answered your question at least a little bit. <laughs> um, we do have a book to review and that is. Three skeins or less, no. fresh knitted. No, it's not. No, it is what is not. it? It is oh. 25 knitted accessories. Dude, you said accessories and I grabbed the wrong book. <laughs> that is terrible. I am a horrible human being. <laughs> so, I had that one though too. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> now that we've established that you're a horrible human being. Oh, I was so excited about that Tannis Gray book. Yeah, I'm excited about this book too, but they're one, different. But they're different things. But I am all about all the accessory knitting, apparently. So so this was sent to us by Interweave F&W Media to review. <laughs> it makes all the accessory books, apparently. <laughs> oh, and these hilarious. are selected from previously published yes, collections. Yes, materials. So this retails for $22.99. Um, if you don't have a lot of Interweave books or a lot of Interweave magazines, this might be a good move for you. Now I'm like totally switching gears. So like the green hat in that upper corner, that's from um, Nantucket Knits, I think. Um, so like there are 25 knitted accessories. It's in the in the title, title. <laughs> yep easy to do and um like i said if you don't already have these in another book it's definitely a great collection there are some socks like the hourglass rib socks by chrissy gardner which i enjoy they come in multiple sizes so from a seven and a half up to a ten and a half perfect for christmas knitting i'm totally gearing up for christmas knitting and um it's in classic Louis alpaca socks, so nice and warm on size one. Um, very simple stitch pattern that's actually the stitch guide is in its own separate box, so it's nice and clear to see. And um, really, really easy pattern that would go quickly. I like that. Speaking of a Christmas knitting, I actually think these weekend socks by Max Candace would be a good choice because they're knit in worsted weights. <laughs> Okay, yeah. you saw my face. I was like, mm, I don't yeah. know about that. They're knit in worsted weight, so even though they are color work, they would go pretty quickly because of the thickness of the yarn. Um, and so they're knit on a U.S. size 5, 3.75 millimeter set of needles. And... So here's the one issue that I have with this book okay. is I have a lot of interweave publications. Um, I wish... 
they've got a great blurb, like the weekend socks. It says these socks are inspired by classic ski sweaters with traditional crisp, clean, two color Norwegian motifs. I would like that to preface with originally published right, in and whatever. I agree. That is a critique. It would be nice to see that way you could quickly determine whether or not, um, based on how many of the patterns that you really loved, is it worth buying the book or should you just go to what you already own? And you can totally look in Ravelry like Correct. you should. Let me see. Now I'm curious. Now that I'm totally switching gears from everything, <laughs> I'm curious if it says both. Um, this one I really like, uh, which is also by Max Candace. I did not realize that. And it's knit in sport weight in Rowan Kid Silk Haze. Whew, um, and that is the modern quilt wrap. I love that. That's originally in scarf style. Yes, it is. Um, one of the scarf styles. There's two of them. I think it was in the first one. And it, it shows you, it almost looks log cabin-y. And it shows oh, you yeah, the, uh, how it's put together. And it's in lots of different colors of kids' and instead of Yeah, kids' little K's, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just pulled up, um, actually it's not listed as both. So I just pulled up Gentleman's Scarf, which I love. It's a great gift scarf. It would be good in that, like, a treasured skein of cashmere or something. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm picturing cashmere, and I think that's what it's out of. Yep, it's out of cashmere. Um, and the yarn's been discontinued, so they offer some su substitutions, which I love, that are still being produced, like Road to China Light, which is a similar content. When you look it up on Ravelry, it just says that it was published in Knitted Gifts. So if you have your phone with you in the bookstore, if you're doing this in a bookstore um, and looking at this, you can kind of look on Ravelry and see if you already have that. I happen to have that book, and it's a fabulous book. It's one of my yeah. favorites because um, there are a ton of gift knitting ideas in there. So it's just something to think about. It's not listed as both. and um, I think because yeah. Ravelry only allows – maybe it doesn't. I no, it doesn't. It allows you to put multiple hmm. – Maybe they just haven't, because it's really new, maybe they just haven't yeah, updated it Yeah, I think yet. they just haven't updated it yet. And it's not like Ravelry is like, let me update right. that. It takes an editor to go, actually, I could probably, I wonder if I could go through Oh my goodness, that. on task. Okay. <laughs> All right. Also, the the Vorderhine hat by Kate Gagnon Osborne, is it knit in worsted weight? So it's got a lot of really detailed twisted stitches, but I think it would be quick enough that it could be a gift. It's got a pom-pom at the on the end too which i'm all yeah and it's of. two skeins of the fiber company organic which is kate's company um which is a nice yarn mm -hmm. so quick nice gift again these are great gift ideas um i really like this was in um the hat book that interwave published that susan b anderson had a pattern in it as well and that is the Huge Torque by Gundren Johnson. That would take a little bit. It's DK weight, burn felted tweeds. So it would take a little bit more effort, but it's really, really pretty. Yeah. It's and again, I like that there's a combination of guy girl patterns I in agree. here. I like the Shoddy Mitts by Jaya Srikishnan. Apologies. I'm really terrible at pronunciation. Um, they are color work and fingering weight but they're short so it's not as much of a time investment and I do really like the um, pattern that the color work is in um, I love the wanderer cap by Jared Flood that's one of the patterns that sold me on the hat book that interweave did yes that is so a it's lovely really hat. really gorgeous and I think it just uses one skein yep one skein of shelter which I Shelter is one of those yarns. There's not a lot of um, yarn shops that carry it. So every time I go into a yarn shop that carries it, um, like fiber space, I find or um, yeah. in Philly that store carries it. Loop. I find myself picking up like four or five skeins in yeah. different colors. It is a very like it's very um, touchable. It's very interesting and rustic and but and in a good way. Fun. Yeah, yeah, and that has a nice clear chart that goes with it as well. Um, I like the Madeline Shawl by Courtney Kelly. It's got a Pico edge and it's knit in worsted weight. Four skeins of the Road to China Light. Um, it looks like it would knit up really quickly because it's in a very open work mesh yeah. design. So it could be a great gift idea. And the yarn that it's knit in is a really luxurious blend with baby alpaca silk, camel, and cashmere. If you want to knit something for you to wear during the holidays, the Grand Army Plaza Shawl is out of lace weight but it would be stunning over like a little black dress done in red 
I love that. Or another color. It's beautiful. Yeah, it would be definitely something that would just really kick up an outfit to the next level. And there's the back of it. There are multiple pictures of each piece from different angles. Yeah, nice charts. Um, the I like the N.A. scarf by Nancy Bush. I'm pretty sure this was in a regular interweave. That's in scarf style. Oh, okay. Um, and it is not flashy, but a very classic wearable item. Um, mm -hmm. It's a silk blend. It uses around 700 yards of a lace weight. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Um, so looking at this book overall, these kind of books drive me crazy because I want to remember every single book that they were originally published yeah. in. <laughs> um, but that's a good thing. And if you are just coming on the scene now, a lot of these books might be out of print. That's true. If you just so, started like, knitting Star recently, style, I don't think is still in print. You might not be able to get your hands on it if your local library doesn't have it. So, um, definitely if you like it, it retails for twenty two ninety nine. If you like more than five of the patterns in here and don't have them already, that would definitely be worth your investment and great for gift knitting, but also selfish knitting as well. I hate the term selfish knitting because really it's it not. has a derogatory effect yeah. and it's not, there's nothing wrong with knitting for yourself. No, I'm all about knitting for myself all the time. So if you're knitting for yourself or others. Yeah. Um, and you can go onto Ravelry and look at that book and it'll show you all the patterns that are in it. So that's a good way to look to see whether or not there's at least five that you really like. I'm totally or, seeing if that book's on Ravelry. Or whatever the number is for you. Like some people, if the, you know, if there's at least three, then that's enough. So it just yeah. depends on your threshold. Yeah, definitely. Um, it'll definitely be on um, Amazon too. Where you can kind of look through mm -hmm. the title page might be on there that lists all the patterns. But anyway, because um, I just looked on Rav and I'm not seeing it, but that doesn't mean that I didn't misspell the word accessories. <laughs> just throwing that out there. Um, and other awesome things, we had the chance to review ED Unit, ED which is a mm -hmm. yeah, it's a wonderful website. Um, it is put on by two professional knitwear designers. Gwen Bortner and Kelly something with an H. I'm going to bring it up right now as we talk about it. Because it's really nice. It is a subscription fee of just under $10 a, a month. month. Mm -hmm. um, so you subscribe on a monthly basis. And they it basically, is... They tackle one subject in, di in different ways every month. Yeah. Um, one... So Go ahead. <laughs> so <Just> go ahead. <laughs> the, it's divided into different sections. So when you sign mm -hmm. in, you get sort of a dashboard. Um, there's Geeky Basics, Two Perspectives, Fascinating and Fab, and Expert Interviews, I think. Um, I made notes, but I didn't do a bunch of punctuation. Yeah. So, so Geeky Basics is um, every month they start out with information about a topic and it focuses on basic technical knowledge so if you are just um if you're interested in a topic that they're covering like this past month has been um using little extra bits of yarn mm -hmm. um it goes through some like basics like how to do a magic knot yes i think different it was joins, one of them russian joins yeah um different yeah different ways to use scraps in a seamless way and then for two perspectives, both Gwen and Kelly, and even other experts in the industry, um, they interviewed someone. Now I'm forgetting who it is. They've interviewed lots of folks. Lucy Neatby was one of the most recent ones that they did an okay. audio interview with. Um, but they've done lots of people. Um, and they do two perspectives on a topic. So um, in this month, Gwen and Kelly both knit skirts. Mm -hmm. And they did very different, using the same pattern, how their different methods came out differently on the way that they um, chose colors and the way that they did combinations of the colors, whether they yeah. did striping, etc. So, um, so there's always two perspectives, at least two perspectives. Um, fascinating and fabulous is one of the topics, and it's looking at products, books, and other resources that might that correspond with that month's topic. And then expert interviews is them interviewing people, different people mm -hmm. in the industry, about it. Um, so they have 
they've done several topics in the past. Yeah, this but year just, they've sort of come into their own and really developed um, a system that works for them. Uh, each week of the month, they put out a an in-depth blog post that includes, sometimes includes videos, audio clips, yeah. um, lots of photos, very rich photography. So every Friday something new is mm -hmm. coming out, right. something that's adding to the topic. They have very clear shot videos. Yes, great lighting, great, great sound audio. quality. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and really, I just like the two perspectives on it. I mean, we're a two-person podcast. It reminds so us a I'm lot of ourselves. Yeah, that if you like us, you probably like two different perspectives on a lot of topics. Yeah. Um, I would definitely recommend this to people who are looking to maybe take your knitting a, one step farther. Mm -hmm. It um is a lot of technical aspects, which is really good. So if you're looking to increase your knitting. Um, and change it up. It would be an interesting way of doing it. It's kind of like um, Hulu or Netflix, where you subscribe for a month and you get access to all the content. Yeah, even past so, months. So. Yeah, so you have the ability to um, look at all the content. The only thing you wouldn't get was they do a free pattern every once in a while, and you have to be a member during that time to get the free pattern. And this month it was a skirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they both designed two separate skirts and you could choose which one you wanted. Um, and they sent a code and you could download it for free. I will say that I do like the way that they do their giveaways, which is directly from their membership list. So you don't have to go to a specific blog post and sign up. If you're a member of their site, you're automatically entered in whatever they're giving away that month, uh -huh. which I think is a great way to do it. Um, so the notes that I took and we've uh -huh. already talked about some of these things, but these were things I wanted to make sure to cover, was their video quality is great. And this is coming from someone who's had to deal with a lot of issues. They do <laughs> and great I put video that on quality, as well. Mm -hmm. um, as far, even lighting, sound, everything is really good. The tutorials are very clear. Um, the hands and nails are done in a way that it's not distracting. It's very, um, it's very easy to watch and learn. Mm -hmm. um, they take their time when they do their videos as well. Um, I do like the Geeky Basics monthly in-depth discussions. They they go into a lot of, um, if you want more information on this topic, you can look at this book or this website or yes. this blog post. Like they, they If reference... you were doing something like Master Knitters, mm -hmm. I could see it being very useful. Indeed. I agree. Um, I, and I, actually, I really like the the discussion just when they're doing a uh, two perspectives discussion. I like the two of them interacting. I think that you learn a lot from that's my favorite part. Their, their discussions. Um, uh -huh. So I think that that's an interesting part and you can go to their website and there's like an introductory four or five minute video that sort of gives you an idea of what the website is like. And we were authorized to do two free memberships. So Yay. that'll be our giveaway. For this week. How long do the memberships last? Are they three just months. like a month? Okay, they're three month three memberships. Three month memberships. So, and the, and the question, which I think is indicative of um, what Kelly and Gwen are trying to do, is if you had your own professional knitting expert at your disposal, what would you want that expert to teach you? And I think that the community that they're trying to foster shows that they want you to sort of help them direct yeah. What they're discussion. going to teach you. Yeah. Like, they want it to be beneficial to you. So I think that it's um, it's something that you could help drive. If you are really, really, really interested in um, mastering increases and decreases in Fair Isle, you know, that could be something yeah. that you could put up as, you know, a discussion topic. And maybe in a couple months, that would be their technique yeah, that they go definitely. into in depth, you know. So I think that it's it's definitely worth your money if you like the kind of community driven progress that they mm -hmm. they sort of foster. So go out and take a look at it. It's edunit.com, e d u knit.com um, and see if you like it. And if you do, you can enter for one of our 3 month giveaways. Um, there will be two winners, each will win 3 month free subscription. And, and we do those giveaways on the Ravelry group. On the Ravelry group, yes. And again, the question is, if you had your own professional knitting expert at your disposal, what would you want that expert to teach you? Cool. So we thank Kelly and Gwen. It was really cool to uh, to get to poke around their site. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a... It's something that I could envision myself doing if I had unlimited time. <laughs> like it's, yeah. a, it's definitely a, a welcoming environment. 
So very nice. Um, we have several cows still going on. I was totally wrong on the dates on the Alice cow. You it totally goes, were. <laughs> it goes into January, like December 31st. So, um, thank you. Those of you who poked me and said, dude, are you sure? <laughs> that is not correct information. Um, so I am going to give like the four people who finished, I'm going to give them a little something, something. Um, so since they finished in October, I, since I'm motivating people to finish early, apparently. I'm so silly. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, the Halloween Craft All the Things is over. I closed the thread this morning because I totally forgot to do it yesterday. And um, we will be drawing for that next week. I have some prizes coming, and I'm going to rummage through my stash and find some stuff. So we will have some prizes for that um, next week that we will be drawing for. I went to Fiverr in the Borough. And it was excellent. I had a great time. I loved seeing people again um, or meeting people for the first time. I got to meet some people for the very first time, which was super awesome. I did come home with a fleece. and um, But you only paid 20-something dollars for it. Twenty two fifty. Yeah. Um, and it won first place in the Tennessee State Fair, which I don't, I'm not certain what that means. <laughs> but it was cool because the woman was um, who was selling it was extremely knowledgeable. It's... Um, and the judging criteria with, the, like, the judge's form was filled out on all the fleeces. So I looked at a bunch. Um, Tara Worsterweight helped me look. And so I looked at a bunch before that one kind of caught my eye. She had one that caught her eye. I should have convinced her to get a fleece, too. That Seriously. would make me feel a little better. But it was only priced at $5 a pound. And I was like, even if I don't like this fiber a whole lot, just trying it. Like, yeah. the ability to try it is worth and it was what a Cotswold? It's a Cotswold. Um, I looked it up in the Fleece and Fiber source book last night. It is a long wool, which yeah. I knew going in. Um, it's very, very shiny. It's so pretty. And um, it's got a lot of drape to it because there's not much crimp to the um, fiber. So as soon as I finish, I have how I have my fleece tables set up to be washed is I have two of the big plastic six-foot-long tables that are smushed together. And right now the Romney that we got at Maryland Sheep and Wool that's like half done is still on there. Um, so as soon as I get that off, I have my choice between three, four fleeces now that I have left. <laughs> Think about it for a second. I like how you put it that way. I have my choice between. I do. I have a Coradale which Leslie has already processed her half. Mm -hmm. I have a 10 pound Romney, which I got from um, Scooter Farm. Pie yeah. and yeah, Ross Farm, um, which I'm super excited about. And I really need to probably work on that next because I owe my sister two pounds of that. Um, and then I have this now and I have a CVM. So this might, I might try the washing machine processing in this one we'll see i would kinda say if you're me. gonna do it do it on a 22 dollar fleece i mean yeah it kind of scares me a little bit but um looked really nice no shortcuts that i could see um she did tell me it was lightly skirted and it wasn't coated i don't know why i keep buying non-coated fleeces <laughs> <laughs> but it looks pretty clean um so i am super excited about that we do we forgot to talk about project sweater chest i'm and just what skipping all over Skipping all over the place today. Um, so I finished Lockwood and Company on what we're reading. It's really good. If you enjoy um, Sherlock Holmes type mysteries, it definitely had that flavor feel to it. Um, it is written from a uh, like 14 year old's perspective. Um, and the second book actually switches characters and it's from a different character's perspective. The second book's already out, so I might get the second. I'm definitely going to get the second book to the library. Um, so I will be reading that shortly. What are you reading, my dear? I'm still reading Quest, uh, The Septimus Heap, the fourth one, I think. I uh, finished Discovery of Witches, and I'm almost done with the second book in that series, School of Night, uh -huh. which is by Deborah Harkness. I'm listening to the audiobooks uh, of that. So. Okay. That's what I've been reading this week. Are you um, enjoying them? Yeah, yeah. I had listened to Discovery of Witches a while back, but the 
Uh, other books weren't out yet, so I re-listened to it. It's vampire, witch, uh, demon sort of fantasy. Is the first one kind of slow to get into because I They're tried all reading a little that. Bit slow. Okay. Yeah. I tried reading that one and I couldn't. I think I got through. I really I like deal, the story. I have a deal with myself where I do the first 50 pages and then yeah. I'm done. I, I like the story a lot, but sometimes the author focuses too much on the details. Like, I don't need to know everything about the room that Eliz the Elizabethan cast. Like, I don't need to know every detail, which can be a little bit irritating. But it's a lot easier when you're listening versus when you're reading. Because I yeah. can just focus on, you know, whatever else I'm doing, knitting or um, processing the fiber, or, like teasing it out or whatever. So, Gotcha. Anyway, um, on to Project Sweater Chest. Yes! So we um... have started a chatter thread in the group. We have. A lot of people are starting their selection process um, with swatching. A lot of people want rules, which I think is funny. Yeah, I don't I don't want to make it too rule-driven because neither us or the Knitmore girls are real strict on our knit-alongs. Um, so it's going to be a knit-along. It's starting now, and we will let you know at least a month before it finishes. How about that? Yeah. You can knit as many sweaters as you would like. We'll put up a finished sweater thread. Draw this is a, November is a great month to knit a sweater because there's this whole no ma 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 ma. Um, it used to be November where you it started with like you write a book in a month. Oh, Nano Rimo. Now it's yeah. Nano Swimo or something. Yeah, something like that. Um, you can tell Leslie and I have participated in a lot. <laughs> we have not ever. No. Um, but it's a great way to double dip if you're interested in doing that. Um, I think they have very like. The original writing is you have to do so many words a day, and yeah, I think... Up um, to 50,000 total for the month. I think that um, the sweater group, the specific rule group on Ravelry does, like, how many stitches. You have to do a certain percentage of, oh. like, there's stitch counts, which is why I've never done it. Yeah, that just makes um, me not want to touch knitting. <laughs> Well, I just, I am terrible at math and spelling and, <laughs> and pronunciation if you haven't figured it out. And, um, like, just trying to figure how many stitches are in a garment just makes me want to vomit in my head, basically. Yeah, it does. It's, it's um, <laughs> very sobering. <laughs> so I'm sure, like, other people have figured out different sweaters, and you could definitely do that. But for us who are total, and I'm not bashing that group at all. I think it's an awesome group, and if you're interested in it, definitely go join it. But um, it just I depends on what that. motivates you. Like, yeah, definitely. Um, so we were going to talk this week about going from yarn to a pattern. So um, last week we talked about like what we like to see in patterns. Like mm -hmm. if you're starting and you're starting your selection process with a pattern and then going to yarn, kind of sorta. This week, let's say that you were in a yarn shop or your stash, which is kind of like a yarn shop for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to go from there. So we found a great resource. Um, it just came out a couple weeks ago. Well, by we, it was Laura who then said, you need to go buy this. Yeah. Um, so there is a StashBot app. StashBot is um, Hannah Fettig did a couple months ago, and the Knitmores reviewed it. This um, thing called StashBot, and you could put it in your bag, and it was like a chart. And if you were shopping and you were saying, hey, I want a sweater's quantity, of worsted how many yards would I have to get or I want a scarf's quantity or I want a hat's quantity or I have a niece who's five and I want a hat for her mm -hmm. how much do I need to buy because we mostly know for ourselves at least I kind of have a general idea for myself yeah as but in experiences and her but for other people no way yeah basically the only way that I knew to do it was to go out and find a sweater that was in that weight and look at what that yardage was listed as it was that's really the only way I knew to do it so because we're talking about sweaters, um, the StashBot app, it, I'll show you my background on my screen. It's that app <laughs> right up there. <laughs> right over my over head. <laughs> blocking Leslie's head. And it is a very cool app. What you do is it's got all these um, options, including both a vest. And a vest is not a sweater, FYI. <laughs> We've had this conversation before. Vests are not kind of sweaters. Um a crop sweater with three quarter length sleeves, an average length sweater, and a long t sweater slash tunic, which is what I try to gravitate, I tend to gravitate towards. And then um, you put that, you click on it, you see it moves. Yeah. Eee, I'm totally making people nauseous now. Okay. 
So you click on that. Awesome, it went right back to it. And then you click on your, um, you scroll down to your chest circumference, and it says in the directions you want to do around two inches ease. That's what they recommend. So I have a 42 chest measurement. So two inch, uh, it's actually like 41 and a half. So two inches ease for me would be around 44. I even read the directions on this. I was going to say, I didn't even realize there were directions. I'm looking now. I'm so smart. And then you do your stitches per inch. So on a worsted weight sweater for me, that's around five stitches per inch. And it tells me I would need around 14 Hundred and sixty yards. Yeah. So if I now I know that I probably would do three quarter length sleeves because if you've known me at all, that's kind of how my sleeves roll ninety percent of the time. Um, so I would kind of take off maybe a hundred yards in my head for that. You want to see something else that's really cool about this app? If you're in the metric revolution, <laughs> you click on that button that says yards, and it switches it to meters. Yep, and changes the inches to centimeters. Or if you live in some place that doesn't matter. It isn't the U.S. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Anywhere else in the um, world. <laughs> so it does work for other things as, like, other measurements besides yards and inches as well. Yeah. Um, can... So if I was at a yarn shop and didn't really have a pattern in mind but knew I wanted to get yarn for a sweater, that's or a good way to kind of narrow it down. Or uh, an average size adult with eight stitches to the inch, then I would know I would need at least 380 yards. Yeah. And they have child measurements on here too, so including baby. And it tells me that on a sock, a baby size sock is like five and a quarter inches, which is also awesome knowledge to know. So it's a great resource. It retails for five dollars. Yeah, for Leslie and I in the app shop both bought it. Um, it was not gifted to us, just so you know. Um, so it's an interesting resource and very useful to have on my phone next to my cupcake mania. <laughs> to uh, Kind of, especially when I'm shopping for stuff for the nieces, I think kind of a, narrow down. I can see it being incredibly useful at festivals where oh yeah, the Wi-Fi signal, if there, sucks or, you know, your, your cell phone service isn't great and you find mm -hmm. a yarn that's just fantastic and you really want a sweater's worth, but you don't know what a sweater's worth is in that yarn. Yeah. I think it would be a great resource for that also if you're out at the local yarn shop or whatever. I think it is a, a really good baseline for um, quantity. Per and she does say that's primarily, those yardage are, are for um, sweaters that are primarily stockinette. Mm -hmm. So you need to realize that if you are doing uh, cables, cables yeah. you want to add um, at least probably 500 yards if you're larger. Um, so just things to keep in mind. So those garments are stocking at measurements primarily. But I can see that being one of the improvements they offer in the app is to say oh, whether yeah. or not it's cabled, whether or not it's lace. Like that, I can oh, yeah, see that add that as like another, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's great. And it's also great if you are like me and you went to a yarn shop that was closing and you're like, I'm going to grab all of the worsted that they have left or you go to the discount bin and you're like, okay, well, that's not enough to make a sweater for me. But I could maybe but, use the pieces. Yeah, I might hat. be able to do. Yeah, so it kind of will help narrow down your stash. So that's one thing. Um, another option is Ravelry. And I feel like I'm talking a lot. Do you want to discuss options that you have on Ravelry for going from a yarn to a sweater? We kind of already touched on yeah, that Yeah, I think that um, we talked about it some in the book review. Is to basically you can go out to um, your yarn the yarn page and look at the recommended projects. I also really like to, um, I like to shop within my stash and my library. And that's probably like, that's going to be my focus over the next year is to knit things out of my library rather than buy every new pattern that I like. <laughs> um, Cause I'm very bad about that, but you can use your advanced pattern search to say uh, I'm going to, I've got, 2,000 yards of a worsted show me what in my library I can knit and so that's one option of doing it you can actually go into the pattern tab on Ravelry mm -hmm. and click advanced pattern search and go like I want a knitting pattern that's 2,000 yards worsted show me what's available the yeah. other option and we kind of touched on this earlier is like I have eight skeins of Cascade 220 and numerous colors in my stash I can go to the yarn tab and type in Cascade 220, 
and then I can click on pattern ideas. And this is what Leslie was talking about earlier. And I can go from there and it'll say all categories. I can narrow it down to cardigan because I like cardigans and see what other people have made. Like February lady sweater is number one. That's a great free pattern. Then go central park hoodie mm -hmm. and I can kind of scroll down that way. So you can use a combination of those two. I'm going from just the pattern search and also the um, yarn search. Yeah. Was there anything else that you wanted to add to that? Honestly, most of what I do is I use advanced search because it's so helpful to be able to see the projects, what they look like on people that are my size versus what they mm -hmm. look like on the model size. Because sometimes that can make or break a sweater. You know, sometimes just doing the math is not enough to make it flattering on different people. So definitely. Uh, I use Ravelry heavily. If they charged a $20 a month fee, I would pay it and I would be happy to pay it. Like, I love that site. And I think Casey and the whole team does a great job making it relevant to knitters. So uh, Definitely. I, I use the advanced pattern search almost exclusively when it comes to picking um, a pattern from yarn. Sounds good. Is there anything else that you would like to say about... Um going from yarn to pattern? I don't think so. Okay. I'm good. Um, I also kind of think like seeing, going out to your local yarn shop, if you have a local yarn shop and seeing what models they have made is a great um, way of seeing things. Or going to a festival, like I went to this weekend and Leslie went to Rhinebeck. Mm -hmm. I found them super inspired. I saw so many pretty um, sweaters. And in fact, one of our viewers wore Jackaroo so I could see what it looks like finished. <laughs> Which was awesome. That's not what she they came... said, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> she was being nice. She was trying to give me motivation to finish mine. Oh. Um, it's the lady who went to SSK that's the food stylist. Oh, Whitney. Fire yes. Up? Yeah. Yes. She's so sweet. I love Whitney. Um, so she had hers on and that totally inspired me. I'm going to take mine with me to um, work on tonight, I think, as I watch the Steelers. So, um... That is our Project Sweater Chest kind of hashtag nonsense this week. Mm -hmm. um, we are doing Project Sweater Chest along with the fabulous Knit More Girls. If you don't listen to their podcast, you should totally check it out. Yes. Also, Susan B. Anderson, who we are a total fangirl. Yeah, we're very biased. So much. Um, so she is wonderful. And her videos and her podcast, as well as her blog, are absolutely fabulous. If you haven't checked her out, you totally should. She's got a great active, both of them have great active groups on Ravelry oh, yeah. as well. Um, so that, they are super awesome people. Um, I got my Bling My String back. So did I. We're back to favorite things. I want to see yours and then I'll show you mine. So mine is um, Geek Chick, I think, is the name of the collection. And she, she always includes a really nice hand <gasps> you got pac-man i'm did. so jealous so and mine was sort of geek and tech um themed sorry about that noise that's probably super annoying <laughs> and she includes a little gift each time and this time it was a key fob or you could yeah. put like um stitch markers and it's got i don't know that you're gonna be able to see that but it's got my ravelry name engraved on there you don't call oh, me cool. less cool um, you can't see it because it's very... Oh, and it was upside down. Now I have to look at mine because I didn't even see that. Oh, it does say my name. Yep. Oh, that's so cool. And it's in Pac-Man fabric. Um, the old arcade style game. And my stitch markers, which always coordinate. I got a little Pac-Man one. Oh, cute. And some coordinating colors. So I think it, that it's super sweet. Erin does a fantastic job. I'm always pleased with what I get, and the, the inside is coordinating. Nice. And she's got bling your string. She always does three-month bag clubs that are really reasonably priced, and the finishing work is always done super well. So I've, I've been nothing but happy with her club. So I'm actually using my first bag from this club in this round right now. That's what my socks been living on. I love that bag. And I'm in the botanicals print, and so my second... It's this. Ooh, that's even it's prettier. It's nice and green and purple, two of my favorite colors. It's got a gorgeous sea, sea glass colored stitch markers with a floral. very pretty, yeah, yeah floral pendant. That's and gorgeous. then I also got the, and this is actually um, 
that really hardcore yeah, canvas. Mm -hmm. Canvas. Well, it's like ripstock nylon almost oh, okay. on the inside, um, so it won't tear on you. And then the bag on the inside is turquoise. That's lovely. Which I love. So I'm sure this will get used in pretty short order. And Humberto loves these bags too because <laughs> they jingle. <laughs> They jingle and the stitch markers, he tries to eat them all the time, and I have to rescue them from him. So Erin always does a great job, like she Leslie does. said. Go on with your car drama, girl. Oh. Uh, so, <laughs> this is getting it's, into, It's got like, a happy ending, though. Well, ending, though. let's wait. Um, uh -oh. So, I've had, I got a 2007 Honda Civic in 2008, at the end of the model year. And, um... No, it was in 2007. It was at the end of the model year because they always released them the year before. Uh -huh. So, and I've really babied this car and I take really good care mm -hmm. of it. I always get synthetic oil and I'll, I'll preemptively do like um, coolant flushing and like all this stuff. I'm always like, whatever it needs, just take care of it because I really want it to last a long time. I do not enjoy having car payments um, and I'm not an adult, so I haven't got a savings account with enough money to buy a car in it. So, um... Anyway, I always take really good care of it, and I've had it for a long time, since Kobe was four. So. That's before I knew you. Yes. Yeah. So. You've always had that car. And I love it a lot. I really, it's a Honda Civic, and I like it lots. And, and it it's has red. 160,000 miles on it, because I drive a lot. If I've given the choice between flying and driving, I will almost always choose driving. And anyway, um, on the way to work on... Thursday. Was it Monday Wednesday. or Tuesday? I thought it was earlier. It was yeah. Wednesday. Um, I realized it was running hot when I got into my parking lot and I turned at work and I turned off the engine. It was steaming and I was like, oh, that's not good. So I turned the key. I didn't start the car, but I just turned the electric part on and the engine, like the temperature gauge was all the way in the red and I was like, oh, crap. So I sat and let it cool down for five or ten minutes, and then I opened the um, hood and looked in the coolant reservoir. I didn't take the radiator cap off because that's a bad idea. But I looked in the <laughs> coolant reservoir, and it was almost empty. And I was like, oh, that's not good. Like, did I run out? I just got the coolant flushed like four months ago. Maybe they didn't fill it again or something. Yeah. So when I left work again, I filled it with water because I know you can do that for very short term. And then I was going to drop it off at the car repair place on my way home uh -huh. anyway. But I couldn't go two miles before it was all the way in the red again. Yeah. And so it freaked me out. I had to keep pulling over, let the engine cool yeah. down, you know. And I even... had to do that with the breeze when my engine cracked. Yeah. So I took it and left it there. And Thursday morning they called me back and said, yeah, your engine's cracked. Um, yeah. Your engine block is cracked and it's leaking coolant, which is bad. You can't drive a car like that. No, <laughs> not for, long, not for anyway. very long. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't go very so far. So I was like, what the heck? Like, I've always taken really good care of this car. And so, you know, I went, I was really upset and angry. And I was working from home. And I was like, oh, God, I don't want to buy a new car. I can't afford to buy a new car. Like, what am I going to do? And so I was com upset and complaining. And my friend Alicia just happened to text me and ask me what was going on. And I told her, and she was like, dude, wait. And so she sent me this link to Consumer Reports website about how Honda Civics between 2006 and 2009, there's a known problem with the engine block cracking. And yeah. if you take it it's to under a, warranty. a Honda dealer, even though mine is mm -hmm. way out of warranty because it's got 160,000 yeah. miles on it. Um, if you take it to a Honda dealership and it meets their criteria of what the problem was, you get a free engine. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, this like for the first 20 minutes, I was like, this isn't real. This is like a hoax. Yeah. And consumer reports is pretty right. Well, Michael's friend Keith reputable. happens to be in town and Keith is a car guy. He's broken down and rebuilt more engines yeah. than I've ever owned. So, you know, he looked it up for me, and he went out and did some research, and he was like, yeah, no, it's legit. And he's like, the hard part is going to be getting them to agree that it's their problem. And yeah. he's correct. It was very difficult to get them to agree that it was their problem. But I got it to the car dealership. I had to get it towed on Friday, and they mm. verified that it meets the requirements, and they ordered my engine. And something that would have cost me either $4,000 or a new car to fix yeah. 
is supposedly happening free. But I'm waiting for that other metaphorical <laughs> shoe to drop. Like, I'm not, I don't believe it's gonna it be okay. until it's they gonna be give okay. me that key yeah. back and I don't give them any money, then I will believe it. And then I'll okay. probably cry. But um, until I get that key back, I don't, I don't believe it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but they said it'll take about a week because they order all the different parts and then assemble the engine there, I guess. Yeah. So. So if you're the praying type, you know, <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Good, good thoughts, good mojo. Good karma. I cannot afford a four thousand dollar repair. Um, but anyway, on to happier things. Laura, convinced... well, that is actually if it works out okay, that is a happy thing. Yes, and it is because a new engine will allow your car to run much right. longer. It's basically, maybe, new, than... I mean, it's not a new transmission or any of that other stuff. But yeah. still, it's a new engine at no cost, hopefully. And also, if you have a between a two thousand six and a two thousand nine. Um, and your engine cracks <laughs> now you know what to do <laughs> yeah um but laura convinced me to buy this and it's something i had looked at before but decided not to buy just because oh i, I did to be convince you to buy that things. it's a hundred acts of sewing so i'm trying to convince my mom into buying that as well and making something for me <laughs> there are different sizes um this one is the xl to 3x size but there's also like a extra small to large size i think yeah um and it comes, it's very simple directions and uh, a really great finished product. Is It's like $10 for the pattern, maybe $12. i will link it in the show notes. And it gives you, you know, step-by-step -step directions of how to cut the fabric, where to pin, where to sew. I just need to order it and give it to my mother and be like, and I like this. here's a gift certificate to this fabric. At the store. end, you have a dress. Be patient, <laughs> laugh at your mistakes, and keep sewing. So where I saw this was Stephanie Chappelle. Mm -hmm. I follow her on Instagram, and she had posted the cutest picture of her wearing um, that dress. Yeah. And it was just freaking adorable. So I took a screenshot, and I linked the pattern, and I sent it to Leslie, and I was like, you need to make this. Yeah. And it looks really easy, actually. And it just, it's, depending on how dressy it is, is what fabric you make it in. Yeah. And, and I'm a you big need fan woven of... woven fabric. Yeah. You need, like, linen, cotton, something like that. No jersey or um, knits. You need something woven. So, I'm going to try to sew one up sometime in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm working on awesome. a quilt top now. Well, I finished the top. I'm working on quilting the quilt mm -hmm. now. So, um anyhow this hopefully i'll have one to show in the next few weeks because it looks cool. pretty it looks like a relatively no nonsense pattern so i should sit up and stop laying back in my chair <laughs> like a gangster yeah that's that's how i roll <laughs> um i think that's it for this week do you have anything else my dear no i think that's it um we're over an hour so we've chatted Wonderful. enough so y'all have a great week and we will see you again next week Bye, y'all.